What's going on guys and welcome to another episode of the Cracker Pack series. Today we are opening up a pack of Cons of Tarkir, which was a really interesting set. So it was very focused on three color cons. Uh, and so uh, we had a lot of really interesting like Mardu decks, Jeskai decks, things like that. Abzam was really, really big during this block. Lots of really awesome stuff. Lots of very powerful multicolor cards. Uh, we also, because it was a multicolor format, had fetch lands in this. So this was the, the reprint of some of the fetch lands. Uh, uh, and so hopefully that's kind of the value card we're looking for out of this set. Outside of that, there are a lot of really powerful cards, so hopefully we get to open them as we go along. Uh, of course, we're going to go through this as if we're drafting the sets. So we'll go through this and hopefully be able to determine what our first round draft pick would be. I uh, did draft this a little bit, not much to be honest, but there were some really, really sweet mechanics uh, that I'm really hoping we can kind of feature here and we'll do the best we can to figure out what we pick. So our first card here, Salt Road Patrol, uh, it's a 2-5 for 3 and a white, and it does have Outlast, so you can pay 1 and a white, tap it, and put a 1-1 one, one counter on this creature. You can only do that as a sorcery, but you can do that uh, as many times as you'd like over the course of the game. So it's actually a really, really cool ability just to build up your creatures. Uh, I will say this, though. The thing that uh, comes up a lot with abilities like this is because of the ability, this card could be good. Uh, and so what I mean by that is if you can get some counters on this, it's a very good card. Otherwise, it's kind of just a stall card, and it's not a very good one either. So a 2-5 for 4, my, forget the ability for the time being. This is kind of how I judge these kinds of cards. Forget the ability for the time being. You're looking at a 2-5 for 4 right off the bat. And yes, that's going to be able to block for days. However, it's probably not going to be able to kill too much, except for some early game stuff, of course, pick off some of those. Um, but what really makes this card is that Outlast ability, and that means you're going to have to sink more mana into it than four to make this a worthwhile card in your deck, to make it aggressive, to make it uh, hopefully be able to swing in for some damage. And so I don't really like cards like this. Uh, things like this where or things where a creature isn't good unless you can activate the, the ability, they tend to be a, a card that I shy away from. So I don't love this. I do like the Outlast mechanic, I will say, but not on this card. Uh, Canyon Lurkers is a 5-2 for 4 and a red, and it has morph for 3 and a red. So you can cast this face down as a 2-2 creature for 3 of any color, and then if you pay that morph cost uh, at any time, you can flip this face up. Uh, so what's really cool about that is it gets you to, to play cards a little bit early, and it keeps information from your opponent. And information, as we've talked about prior, uh, is always really, really important. Uh, whether you have all the information or you keep your opponent from having it, either way, it's very, very important uh, to maintain that. And so cards like uh, these morph creatures and things like that really hide that information. And then ideally, you can kind of surprise your opponent with something later on. Now, this is going to ideally be able to be morphed and then tr uh, flip up to trade up for a heavier duty creature on the opponent's side of the field, or just be able to swing in uh, in the instance that your your opponent just has nothing on the board. The problem with it is that it is a 5-2, and so it's really going to die easily. Uh, and so I don't actually love this card really either, to be honest. Good feature of the morph mechanic as well, but just not exactly the most exciting pick. Uh, Alpine Grizzly is a 4-2 uh, for two and a green vanilla creature. Uh, this is an okay card. Uh, it's a curve consideration pick for sure. Uh, if you absolutely need a three drop, this is a fairly good aggressive card. It's probably going to trade off immediately, uh, but it is going to trade off and it's probably going to trade up and that's great. Uh, four powers, pretty big. And so it's going to be able to trade with a lot of what the opponent has most likely. So I, well, again, this is not a first pickable card by any means. If I'm in green and I'm looking at my curve and I really am, am light on that three drop slot, I would not feel bad about picking a card like this. Uh, Bitter Revelation uh, is a sorcery for three and a black. You can look at the top four cards of your library, put two of them into your hand and the rest into your graveyard, and then you lose two life. So interesting card here. I don't hate it, but I also don't love it. It's not something that I'm really excited to play by any means. Uh, it does let you look at four cards, which is a lot of cards, and then you get to pick two of those to keep, which I think is really, really important. On top of that, if they're going into your graveyard and constructed, it would be very easy uh, to, to kind of exploit that for some, you know, reanimator shenanigans, something like that. 
However, in limited, you really don't get that option quite as often because you're you're subject to whatever cards you open. Uh, and so I think this is much more of a like constructed-ish card. Uh, still don't really think it's good there, but I, I don't love it. I think in a black deck, again, it's a value card. Maybe you can get something off of it. You may play it if you're light on playables, but I don't love it. Uh, Singing Bell Strike uh, is an enchantment aura for one and a blue. You enchant a creature. When it enters the battlefield, you tap the enchanted creature. That creature does not untap during its controller's uh, next. Or excuse me, does during its controller's untap step. I can speak. I promise. Uh, and then the enchanted creature has tap six and untap this creature. So. This is a pseudo removal spell. It's sort of like a blue pacifism with an out. Uh, it 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 taps the creature down, so that actually gets a little bit more uh, aggressive in terms of like you you can shut off a lot of activated abilities if they require the creature to be tapped, which is kind of nice. Um, it is interesting that you have that out of six mana. The opponent does, I should say. Uh, they can pay six and untap the creature, which is fine, but that's a huge investment. Uh, and so I actually really, really like this card. I think so far it's the pick. Pseudo removal, even uh, just stuff like this, is really, really at a premium uh, in a set with you know multicolor stuff and probably not a ton of removal uh, in general. Uh, Bloodfire Mentor is a 0-5 for 2 and a red. You can pay 2 and a blue, tap it, draw a card, and then discard a card. So this is your classic looter, uh, though I will say it's a very odd looter in the sense that it's a 0-5 for 3. That's very, very strange for a looter. Uh, and then you have to pay 3 of a different color uh, to actually use this ability. Now, obviously, I mentioned this is a 3-color format generally. Uh, this does have the Jeskai symbol on it as well, and that makes sense. Uh, you would excuse me, most likely want to play this in a Jeskai deck, uh, but I don't really love it. Uh, it's basically just a stall card. Um, however, what's kind of nice about it is while it's stalling, it can provide you with a little bit of card selection. It's not card advantage. You're discarding a card and drawing a card, so you're actually netting zero, but you get a little bit of selection, and that's always really, really good. I like that quite a lot. Uh, I still like the Bell Strike a little bit more, but I don't think this is a terrible card by any means. Highland Game is a 2-1 for 1 and a green. Uh, when it dies, you gain 2 life. Pretty straightforward 2-drop here. I don't hate it. Uh, it's perfectly fine to play as a 2-drop. It's probably just going to be trading off with something, but you get a little bit of an upside by gaining 2 life off of it, and I think that's actually kind of nice. It makes it a little bit easier to, to not feel so bad when you're trading off your early game uh, creatures and things like that. So don't love this more than the Bell Strike, but I do actually not uh, kind of like this card just as a solid 2. Uh, Dismal Backwater is a land, part of the a cycle of lands in this set. Uh, they do enter the battlefield tapped, and when it enters the battlefield, you gain a life. All of them have that. Uh, and then this one taps for blue or black. So there's, you know, a lot of two-color lands like this that do this. Uh, and they're actually really, really nice to pick up, especially because, like I said, this is a three-color format. Uh, and being able to, to fix your colors is really, really crucial uh, in, a, in a set like this. You're going to have to have fixing. Uh, and so while I wouldn't necessarily first pick these, I would pick them up maybe mid-pack uh, because you really don't want to go too long without picking up any. Otherwise, you're going to be really, really constrained on your mana. Uh, Mardu Hateblade is a 1-1 one, one for 1 white. Uh, and you can pay a black and give it Death Touch until the end of the turn. So pretty straightforward card. It does feature that multicolor kind of uh, ability here where you have to pay a black on a white card. Uh, this does fit into the Mardu color scheme, which is white, red, and black. Uh, and actually, don't mind this card. It's a perfectly fine one drop. It's not an amazing one by any means, but uh, being able to give this Death Touch at instant speed is pretty awesome just because you can trade up with a lot of stuff for that. Uh, and so I don't love this more than the Bell Strike. The Bell Strike's a little bit more solid in my opinion, uh, but this is a good card. It's a perfectly fine one drop. If I'm in those colors, I would not hate to pick this up. Uh, Valley Dasher is a 2-2 two, two for 1 and a red. It has haste and it attacks each turn if able. So surprisingly, I actually really like this card. It's a very aggressive card, obviously. It's a 2-2 two, two for 2 with haste, so it's going to be able to swing in immediately. Absolutely love that. The downside here, it does have to attack every turn, so eventually they're just going to be able to block it and it's just going to die. 
Uh, however, what's kind of nice about something like this is you can do a lot of really aggressive stuff, like throw on an enchantment. I know that's not my favorite thing, but throw on an enchantment with this or throw on a combat trick to this uh, and really, really surprise your opponent because you have to attack anyway. Uh, so you represent a combat trick basically every turn until you actually have one. Uh, and so I think this is actually a really solid two drop, not better than the bell strike by any means, but definitely very, very good and very aggressive for sure. Uh, our first uncommon is Mardu Blazebringer. It's a 4-4 four, four for two and a red, and it attacks. Uh, when it attacks or blocks, you sacrifice it at the end of combat. So, interesting card. I don't love cards like this that require you to sacrifice them immediately, particularly in draft, only because you're really, really dependent on what's on the board. And if it can't stick on the board, it's probably not that great. Uh, now, that being said, it is a 4-4 four, four for three, so it's going to be really, really good value. Uh, but you've only got one turn to use it, so you better make it count. I'd still take the Bell Strike over this. Uh, personally, that's just a more solid, uh, reliable card. But if you're in an aggressive deck, I think you can kind of get away with stuff like this, where this is more of your top end kind of cards, and you're just trying to swing in for a bunch of damage really quick. You don't really care uh, what, what ends up happening long term. Uh, Merrick Nightblade is a 2-3 three for 3 and a black. It also features Outlast, as we saw with the first card. Uh, in this case, it costs 1 black, so you tap it, pay the black, and then you put a 1-1 one, one counter on it. Uh, and then each creature you control with a 1-1 one, one counter on it has Death Touch. So this is a really, really good card, uh, in my opinion. So not only does this uh, boost itself up as many times as you need it to, but on top of that, it grants Death Touch to all of your other things that might have Outlast or might have a counter from some other means, and that's huge. Death Touch is really, really good and limited because that just means you're trading up in value almost every single time. Uh, and so I actually really like this card. I think, honestly, this beats out the Bell Strike for me. Uh, this is just such a powerful card. It gives you a little bit of focus into maybe focusing on like that Outlast mechanic, uh, but you don't necessarily have to. This is a good card on its own. It doesn't necessarily need that. Uh, Horde Ambusher is a 2-2 two, two for 1 and a red. Uh, when it blocks, it deals 1 damage to you, and then you can morph it for 3, of course, and then turn it face up for uh, revealing a red card in your hand. Uh, and when it's turned face up, target creature can't block this turn. Uh, so again, this encourages that aggression. Uh, it doesn't actually want you to block because obviously it, it deals damage to you if it does. And uh, by, turn, by morphing this and kind of turning it face up then, you actually encourage uh, other creatures to attack on your side because the opponent can't block with something. So uh, I actually like this card. I don't think it's amazing by any means because to morph it, you have to pay three, which means it's going to be a little bit behind the eight ball in terms of power to toughness ratio. Uh, but it's not a bad card. I think the art's really sick. Uh, but I'd rather, I think, take the Nightblade. I just think that's a much better, more solid pick. Uh, and then our rare is Deflecting Palm. So it's an instant for a red and a white. The next time a source of your choice would deal damage to you this turn, prevent that damage. If damage is prevented this way, Deflecting Palm deals that much damage to that source's controller. So this is a really, really powerful card. Uh, it's, I think, uh, honestly, one of the best, like, pieces of damage spells in this in this set um i think i'd take it over the nightblade it's a little bit tricky because the nightblade is just a really solid creature but this just does so so much you can really surprise an opponent with a card like this and i think that's really really crucial uh it's also very cheap and at instant speed obviously you're going to be able to do a lot with it um i think i take that here we did not get a foil or anything it's a little bit close in my opinion, but I think Deflecting Palm is going to be my pick. Feel free, of course, in the comment section if you disagree to please let me know. Uh, but if you enjoyed this video, please make sure to leave a like or a comment down below. And as always, please make sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of our awesome content. But with that, I'm going to get out of here. Thanks so much for watching, guys. I'll see you in the next Crack-A-Pack episode.